lions? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, lions? Today, we're going to be talking about macronutrients. Hey, Josh, what are macronutrients? What a fantastic question, Jim. Macronutrients are nutrients that our bodies require in large quantities to support normal function and health. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Josh Matos, and today we'll just be going over the basics to macronutrients just to get you familiar with them, um, their functions in the body, and examples of each macronutrient and perhaps some of the recommendations for how much of these macronutrients you should consume on a daily basis. Macronutrients are energy dense. So what is energy? What do you mean energy dense? Energy is calories. That's simple. So the more calories a food has, technically the more energy that food has. And macronutrients are comprised of three categories. You have your carbohydrates, your fats, and your proteins. So let's start with carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are our primary source for fuel and energy, especially during anaerobic exercise. Uh, carbohydrates are composed of chains of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You got carbo, carbon, and you have hydrate, oxygen, hydrogen, aka water, which is where you get the word carbohydrate from. And you know, examples of these include fruits and vegetables, grains, you know, oats, chips, pop tarts. These are all examples of good sources, good meaning abundant sources of carbohydrates. Fiber is also under the category of a carbohydrate as well. You know, fiber is a, a very important nutrient that your body needs. Um, yes. Yes. What about lipids, fats? Fats are also a source of energy for the body and they're actually very energy dense, which means they have a lot of calories. Calories equal energy. Why is this, Josh? Well, good question, viewer. You have more carbon in the molecular structure of fats compared to the molecular structure of carbohydrates. And you have more matter, which means more energy, which is why fats bring you a lot more calories than carbohydrates do. Too high, you can develop, you can contract certain diseases, which is why it's important to keep our fat intake reasonable. You want to have daily, you want to have your fat, but you don't want to have too much of it. A good recommendation for fat is around, there's a safe range, just keeping it reasonable. I'd say under 100 grams is where you want to stay. Obviously it depends on the size of the person, but generally under 100 grams, even that is a little bit liberal with fat. Now examples of fat include butter, any type of nuts, olive oils, different type of oils, stuff like that, those are all fats that can contribute to a balanced diet. Next we have protein. Proteins are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just like carbohydrates and fats are, except they also include nitrogen. But generally, protein is not a primary energy source in the body. Protein's main role in the body is to support tissue growth, muscle growth, and maintenance. Proteins break down into amino acids and those amino acids perform the functions such as supporting tissue growth and repair in the body. Examples of protein include you got your whey protein powder, chicken, steak, and even a lot of carb heavy sources such as oats also contain some good amounts of protein. Generally, if you're eating a well-balanced diet, you're going to get a good amount of protein. So how do you make this applicable to your daily energy intake. Well, if you're gaining muscle or if you just want to retain muscle and are losing fat, a general template that most people will agree on is that one gram of protein per pound of body weight is a pretty safe estimate. Now there are studies that show a little bit more protein can support muscle growth and studies that show a little bit less protein can still support muscle growth. Generally with one gram per body weight being kind of in the middle and that's great That means you have some room to work with the point is you have the freedom to choose 
within reason how much protein to have per day, keeping in mind one gram per pound of body weight is what's recommended. So that leaves us for fats and carbohydrates. This is where it gets a little bit funky because it's hard to tell anybody how much fat or how many carbohydrates they should be eating throughout the day. Evaluate your goals. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you're concerned about your health. So you don't want to go too high on fats, but the best advice isn't available to you unless it's garnered only for you. Honestly, the main point is generating a caloric surplus or deficit from your carbohydrate intake and generally with fat it's easy to get unhealthy if you go overboard. So hey thank you so much for watching. This is just a little bit of an overview, kind of give you an idea as far as macronutrients. Hopefully this was of some help to you. Um, we definitely greatly appreciate it if you subscribe, if you comment or like or dislike. If you didn't like the video, please by all means dislike the video. I don't want, you know, you don't have to lie to me. If you don't like it, don't like it. Yeah, thank you so much. My name is Josh Matos. I appreciate you watching. Stay hungry and have a good one. I'm not in the lion's den. Actually, you know what? The world is my lion's den. Stay hungry and I'm out the lion's den.